Hello and welcome to your Lettings Finance training. In this video we're going to be covering deposit management. That will include registering your deposits, refunding your deposits, any bank transfers you might need to do between your client and deposit accounts and also deposit considerations for tenancy renewals. So jumping over into Expert Agent, for any deposits that you've charged within the system where you have selected the top option, deposit paid into or register with deposit scheme as the deposit allocation option. Once the tenant has paid those deposit funds to you, that will force those deposit funds through into your manage deposit section. You can access the manage deposit section from your top finance menu and manage deposits at the bottom. There are several sections to your manage deposits the first one that we're going to look at is the deposits to be paid into or registered with scheme. This is the section your deposits will come into as soon as they are received and this will show you any deposits that have been paid to you by the tenant that you haven't yet dealt with. So these are the deposits that still need to be registered or paid across into the scheme. You'll see the tenancy address, the tenant name that that deposit relates to, how much deposit you've received and when that was received and you'll also see the tenancy start date there. You've got the option to filter this section by branch and you can also search for a particular tenant or property if you need to. You can also order this report by any of the available columns. As with all of your financial reports and expert agent, this can also be exported to a CSV spreadsheet if needed. When you're ready to register your deposit, you're going to click the Pay Register with Scheme button alongside the deposit in question and you'll be presented with this pop-up box. And it's just going to be a case of filling in the required information. So the top option you'll have will be Select Action. Expert Agent wants to know whether you're going to be paying that deposit to the scheme. So are you an agent that uses a custodial deposit scheme where you transfer that money across to the DPS, TDS, My Deposits, etc.? or are you going to be registering that deposit with the scheme? So do you use an insurance-based scheme? Will you be holding those deposit funds either within your client account or within a separate deposit account for the duration of the tenancy, but registering it with the scheme? So you're selecting the action that's required. We'll start off by having a look at paying the deposit to the scheme. So this is gonna be for any agents that use a custodial-based scheme. What we'll do next is we'll confirm the transaction date, so the date that we're paying that money across to the scheme. We'll confirm the bank account we're making that payment out of. We'll pop the scheme ID in there that we've been given by the DPS. We'll confirm the amount that we're paying across to the scheme and we will click the save icon. At that point, this deposit will disappear from this first page, deposits to be paid into or registered with scheme, because we've now told Expert Agent that, that that deposit has been paid across. If we were to look at our payments to make report for today, and look at my deposits tab, what we'll see on that report is that deposit payment there with the reference it needs. So when we're making our daily payments, we'll also be able to pay that deposit across to the scheme as part of that payment process. If we flip back to manage deposits, where that deposit will now have gone is if I change my show option to deposits paid into scheme, we'll see that deposit sat at the top there. So for those of you who pay your deposits over to the scheme, your deposits will sit in the deposits paid into scheme tab and this should be a list of all your deposits that are currently with the scheme. It will give you the relevant information, how much deposit was received, when it was received, and how much you've paid over to the scheme and when that was paid. You'll also get some totals at the bottom, so you should be able to use this section to reconcile against your DPS account, for example, to confirm that everything that should be with the scheme is with the scheme. For those of you that don't pay your deposits across to the scheme, so those of you that use insurance-based schemes, when you click that Pay Register with Scheme button, you'll be selecting to register the deposit with the scheme. 
The options are fairly similar underneath, so you'll have the transaction date, the date you're registering that deposit, the scheme reference, so your TDS scheme reference number for example, and how much you're registering. When you save, again that deposit will disappear from this list, but your deposit will go somewhere separate, your deposit will go into the deposits currently registered with scheme option. Similar scenario though, this will be a list of all your deposits that you've recorded as being registered with the scheme. Again, how much you've received and when it was received. And you'll also see the scheme reference there for you. If you're holding that deposit within your main client account, you're keeping it in the client account, that will be the last step you'll need to do. If you've got a separate deposit account though, and you transfer that deposit over to the deposit account, you'll also need to put that bank transfer onto Expert Agent. The way you'll do that is via the top finance menu, the account sub-menu and bank transfers. You'll have transaction date, so set that as the date that you're moving the money if it's not today. You'll have your from bank account, so we're going from the client account to our deposit account. You'll need a description and you'll want to pop the amount in. Now with our bank transfers, it's really important that we assign the correct records to the bank transfers so that expert agent logs that correctly for you. The two records that you need to sign when you're dealing with deposit transfers are the tenancy and the applicant. So expert agent needs to know which tenancy that deposit is for and who the applicant was that paid it. So we'll just assign those records now. and then we'll click the save icon and we'll be presented with that green pop-up to confirm that it's completed successfully. When we're looking at reconciling our account now, that bank transfer will now show on our reconciliation so that we can reconcile that transaction off against our bank statement to make sure we process that correctly. So that's dealing with registering our deposits at the start of the tenancy. We're now gonna look at the other end of that deposit process, which will be refunding the deposit at the end of the tenancy. And again, we'll look at that in two parts. First of all, looking at those deposits that are registered with a custodial-based scheme, so those deposits that are with the scheme, and then looking at those under an insurance-based scheme. So when it comes to the end of the tenancy and you've carried out the checkout, etc., and you're looking to deal with the deposit itself, in your Manage Deposit section, alongside each deposit, you'll have an Add a Note. Add a note will open up a new event for you, so you can use this to upload any notes on the checkout, any quotes for dilapidations, anything like that, using the files to upload. You can pop any notes onto there regarding the checkout process, so you can have everything logged on Dexpert Agent as an event, as you would throughout the tenancy, so you don't need to keep hard copies of all that checkout documentation. Once you've dealt with all that and you're happy that you're going to process the return, because these kinds of deposits aren't held within your client account, they are with the DPS themselves, what you might want to do is use the add a note function just to record what's happening with that deposit. So how much is going back to the tenant, how much is being held for dilapidations, that kind of thing. Once you've processed that with the deposit scheme themselves, so you've released it from there, you can come into your manage deposit section and you can archive the deposit and you can tick to confirm that you want to archive the deposit and that will remove the deposit from your list of deposits that are currently registered. So this list will always be an up-to-date list of your deposits that are with the scheme and you can always keep that reconciled. Any money that's going back to the tenant will generally go straight back to the tenant from the deposit scheme themselves. That won't touch your bank account. So you won't need to do anything in terms of that money with your financial accounts. However, any dilapidations probably will come to you to be processed through to the landlord. 
So in that scenario, what you'll want to do is as soon as that money hits your bank account, you'll want to come onto that landlord record and you'll want to right click financial, receive payment. We'll make sure we're selecting the correct property that the deposit refund relates to. We've got received from, we're going to want to change this and over type it to reflect the monies coming from the deposit scheme themselves. We'll enter the amount that we've received. We'll confirm the bank account that money's come into. We'll confirm the date that money came in and the payment method. We've got the option to use the payment reference or payment notes, so you might want to pop in there what this money's for, what the refund was for. If you've already had the invoice in that that deposit deduction was for, that will be listed there as long as you've added it onto Expert Agent. So you'll just be able to tick alongside the invoice and click the save icon in the bottom right hand corner. If I look on my statement tab now, we'll see that receipt from the DPS listed there with the notes that we gave it. And we've used that money to mark that invoice as paid so that contractor will now appear for payment as normal. If the invoice hadn't yet come in, that money would just sit as a payment on account, a balance in hand for the landlord. And as soon as the invoice or invoices came in, we would then be able to allocate against the invoice at that point. So for those of you that use an insurance based scheme rather than a custodial based scheme, your process is going to be fairly similar in terms of adding note and using that event function to record the details of the checkout, etc. When you're ready to return the money, obviously you've got that money within your account, so you're going to need to deal with the financial side of that as well. So to do that, you're going to click the refund deposit button. You'll confirm the date you're making that refund and the bank account that money is being refunded from. So be careful here in terms of whether you're paying that from the client account or the deposit account. Obviously, if you are paying that from the client account and the money's held within the deposit account, it's going to involve a bank transfer from the deposit account back to the client account in the same way you did when you received the money in the first place. Expert agent will let you know how much you're holding in total and then you just need to record the split. So how much of that money is being held for the landlord? Let's just say that was 200 pounds on this occasion. And how much of that money is being returned to the tenant? So you'll see here, if you've got multiple tenants who paid that money to you initially by the amount that's alongside their name. So we can pop the remaining 1800 alongside our tenant there. When we save, that deposit will disappear from this list. So again, as with before, this list is a complete list of what's currently registered with the scheme so we can always reconcile. If we go into our tenancy record now, just to have a look at that. On our statement tab, we'll now see the deposit refund for that property that we just made for Miss Goss of the 1800. And she's now got a balance in hand of 1800. When we're ready to pay that money back to her, so physically pay it out of our account, we're gonna right click financial issue a refund, we'll confirm the date of that refund, confirming the tenant, we're confirming the bank account one more time, so again if we are refunding that from the deposit account we'll select the deposit account there, if we're doing a bank transfer and moving it from the client account we'll select client account there, we'll confirm the amount we're refunding, we can pop a note in there if we want to, and we'll save. We'll get that green pop up to confirm that that refund has been processed successfully. That payment will sit with the notes we gave it on that tenant statement and their balance will be back to zero. And if we look at our payments to make report for today, for our tenants, our tenant will sit on there with a payment to be made to her so when we're paying our landlords, contractors, etc., we'll see that we've got that payment to make to our tenant and we can do that as part of our normal payment run.
in terms of how that affects our landlord on their statement they will see the similar deposit refund with the amount that you release to them and they'll have that balance there as well and in the same way we used our receipt from the DPS for those deposits that were custodial we can use that deposit refund to pay any invoices in the same way. The final thing I need to do for that deposit is my bank transfer. So again, top finance menu, accounts, bank transfer. This time because it was a refund, I'm going from deposit to client. Moving the full deposit amount back because I'm going to pay those two separate amounts out to my tenant and to the contractor on behalf of my landlord from the client account. I'm assigning my tenancy. I'm assigning my applicant. And I'm saving. We're waiting for that green pop-up. And again, I'll be able to reconcile that all off within my reconciliation. The final section we want to have a look at in terms of our deposit and deposit management will be any considerations for our deposits when we're looking at tenancy renewals. So when we are renewing our tenancy within the system via our right click, change status, renew tenancy, we're confirming the detail of our renewal. We're confirming the rental amount, whether that's increased or whether that's the same. And we're updating all the relevant dates and clicking save. If the deposit amount that you're currently holding is in excess of the deposit threshold in reference to the Tenant Fees Act 2019, you will be presented with an alert at this point to confirm that the deposit you're holding is more than you should be holding based on the rental amount of the tenancy. Expert agent will also confirm for you what it thinks the maximum you should be holding. So we can obviously cancel this if we need to go in and edit anything or OK and continue to create a new tenancy agreement, etc. If we were holding too much money at that point and we needed to do a deposit refund, the first thing we want to do would be find our deposit in our Manage Deposit section. We'll use the refund deposit option here and we'll enter alongside the tenant how much we'll be releasing back to them. So let's just say in this scenario we're going to be releasing £1,000 back to our tenant. We'll just be holding the remaining £1,000. We'll save that there. An expert agent will update that information for you. So the deposit that's held is now £1,000 and we've paid £1,000 to them. In the same way that we looked at with our tenancy ending, when we're ready to return that money to the tenant, we'll do a right click financial issue a refund. And we'll save that there. and that payment to our tenant will sit on their statement and that will also sit within our payments to make report to pay back to the tenant. What we'll want to remember to do is update the details on our tenancy as well now. So we'll change the deposit amount here to a thousand pounds and save. And just in the interest of keeping everything neat, we'll also change the deposit amount alongside our tenant on the tenants tab. That concludes our deposit management section of your training. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video.